This is Christian Voice. I'm Stephen Green. We are rejoicing that the Israel Defence Force has liberated four of the hostages taken by Hamas terrorists during the atrocity they visited on their neighbours on 7th of October last year. Around 120 hostages remain in Gaza now, and over 40 have already been pronounced dead, according to reports. Let us not forget Hamas is committed by its founding charter to destroy Israel from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Its charter repeats a Muslim article of faith in the Hadith that Muslims must kill all Jews. You, that is, Muslims, will fight against the Jews and you will gain victory over them, it says. The stones will betray them, saying, O oh, Abdullah, I slave of Allah, there is a Jew hiding behind me, so kill him. The Charter of the Palestine Liberation Organization, dominated by Fatah, which runs what is popularly known as the West Bank, does not mention the Hadith, but still aims to expel what it calls Zionism, that is, the State of Israel, through armed struggle. And the response of the West? Since 7th of October, the streets of London have been filled with people demonstrating not for the peace of Jerusalem or for the safety of Jewish people in the land, or else for that matter, but for Hamas. Advocating a two-state solution is already the policy of His Majesty's government, but they currently will not recognise the state of Palestine without Israeli agreement. However, a political party in the UK, one which may form the next government, has said it would have the United Kingdom recognise a Palestinian state unilaterally. And three-quarters of the United Nations membership already do the same. Those in green on the map. Every Muslim nation, most of Christian Africa, the Caribbean, South America and Asia. Spain, Ireland and Norway have just joined them. We stand for truth here and to regard two states existing side by side, one of which calls for the destruction of the other, constantly firing missiles into it as even remotely plausible, is a politics of absurdity. It stands right up there with believing net zero is achievable, or that a man can be a woman, or that it won't harm children to see pornography so long as it's in sex education. But recognising a state of Palestine goes further than absurdity, because there is a spiritual perspective. Here's the prophet Balaam pronouncing God's blessing on Israel, not only that, but those nations who stand with Israel God will also bless, and those who work against that nation God will curse. Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. The theme persists. Centuries later, the prophet Zechariah reported that in the day of the Lord, God himself will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. He goes on. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Out of that, an argument can be made that any nation which recognises a Palestinian state without Israeli acceptance is cursing Israel and putting itself under a curse. The word of God appears to say that in order for blessing from on high to fall upon the United Kingdom, for example, we must stand with Israel. Being constitutionally a Christian nation, we must also support Christian brothers and sisters both sides of the divide in the Holy Land. But recognising Palestinian statehood does not do that either nor does it bring peace, in my humble opinion. But how do you see it? Click on the link to our website article and leave a comment and your contact details. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for wisdom for those in authority over our nation. Open their eyes, Lord, to the spiritual dimension. Grant them humility and wisdom. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, like and share this video. And don't forget, to do this work, we rely on the Lord's blessing and your prayers and financial support. Thanks for watching.